Today, we continue exploring the prophecies of the Native American Hopi tribe in our program, multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet. Prophecy of the Golden Age, Part 14, the sacred stone tablets of the Hopi and the four races. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. According to Hopi prophecy, at the beginning of this world, the Great Spirit made the Earth's people into four nations and gave each one a teaching. At the end of this world, these nations were to come back together and share their teachings so that humanity could have peace and a great civilization could come about. The Great Spirit thus entrusted two stone talbots to each race. The Hopi have kept their two stone tablets at Hopi land, the land of the Hopi sovereign nation in Arizona, USA, located among four sacred mountains. Two other stone tablets are said to be kept by the Kikuyu tribe at the foot of Mount Kenya in Africa, while the others are somewhere in Tibet and Switzerland. Interestingly, all four of the guardian nations, namely the Hopi for the Native American race, Kenya's Kikuyu tribe for the African race, the Tibetans for the Asian race, and the Swiss for the European race live in the mountains. Moreover, each race was given a responsibility or guardianship over a natural element. Respected Native American speaker, Dr. Lee Brown, once elaborated on this in 1986 as follows. And to the Indian people, the red people, he gave the guardianship of the earth. And we were to learn during this cycle of time, the teachings of the earth and the plants that grow from the earth and the foods that you can eat and the herbs that are healing so that when we came back together with the other brothers and sisters, we could share this knowledge with them because something good was to happen on the earth. Perhaps this is why the Native Americans always refer to the planet as Mother Earth, a great living entity and unconditional giver of sustenance. The Native Americans have a deep and real connection with her and have emphasized more persistently than any other race the need to treat her with respect for the sake of future generations. Today, it is good that our world is catching on to the native people's ancient wisdom, with modern society praising all things eco-friendly, organic, and natural. In other words, we are learning to also appreciate what comes from Mother Earth. And to the south, he gave the yellow race of people the guardianship of the wind. And they were to learn about the sky and breathing and how to take that within ourselves for spiritual advancement. And they were to share that with us in this time. It is true 
that the Asians such as the Indians and Chinese are well versed in astronomy, astrology, and the influence of the stars on humans' lives. With such abilities to see the invisible reality and forces beyond physical limits, the Asians are also adept in spiritual practice. While mastering the mystical art and science of meditation to contact the divine, they also developed more mental and physical disciplines through their amazing grasp of the wind or the flow of qi, breath, or life force. We now see that Asian techniques such as yoga, qigong, tai chi, and acupuncture are widely practiced and benefiting countless people around the world. And to the West, he gave the black race of people the guardianship of the water. When I went to the University of Washington and learned that it was a black man that had been a blood plasma, it didn't surprise me because blood is water. And the elders already told me that black people would bring the teachings of water to humanity. Internationally praised African-American surgeon, Dr. Charles Drew, revolutionized medicine by discovering a way to safely store blood plasma for transfusions. During World War II, he applied his expertise to set up two large blood banks, thus saving thousands of wounded soldiers' lives. In more recent times, we heard about the gifted Ethiopian scientist, Dr. Biruk Deselin Yursa, who innovated a solution to clean oil-contaminated water using a mango peel extract. And perhaps it is no surprise that the prize-winning inventor of a low-cost nanotech water filter was yet another noble African, Dr. Askwar Halanga, a Tanzanian chemical engineer who dreams of bringing clean drinking water to the masses and thus help communities develop. What's more, according to West African indigenous cosmology, water is the medicine that cleanses negative energies and encourages reconciliation and peacemaking. The respected Dagara shaman elder, Dr. Maladoma Patrice Somme explains, people, especially people in crisis, are naturally attracted to water. Just the sight of a large body of water brings a feeling of quiet and peace, a feeling of home. Water resets a system gone dry. Dr. Somme is devoted to sharing Africa's wisdom with the world. We will be right back with more on the Hopi prophecies, so please stay tuned. Welcome back to our program on the prophecies of the Hopi indigenous people. And to the north, where there's white snow on this continent, he gave the white race of people the guardianship of the fire. And if you look at the center of many of the things they do, you will find the fire in this light bulb. They say that is a white man's fire. If you look at the center of a car, you will find a spark. If you look at the center of the airplane, the train, you will find the fire. And the fire moves, also consumes. This is why it was the white brothers and sisters that begin to move upon the face of the earth and reunite us as a human family. 
We know it was members of the white race of people who discovered and harnessed nature's fire, which is electricity. The contributions of Benjamin Franklin, Alessandra Volta, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, and many others have made it possible for cities to flourish on electrical grids and for people to enjoy all kinds of electronic devices, including computers, radios, television sets, and phones. In the transport field, it was again members of the white race who invented the fuel-burning steam engine, locomotive, automobile, and airplane. We can only be grateful to their guardianship of fire that lets us move, mingle, and communicate on an unprecedented scale as one global human family. As we can see the story reflected around us, our world civilization has in recent decades become highly interconnected and developed. But the Hopi remind us to be responsible. The Hopi Tekwa wheel symbol showing the four directions, nations and elements, bears the meaning. Together, with all nations, we protect both land and life and hold the world in balance. With the present day impacts of climate change, it is more urgent than ever that we unite for the planet. So it is important, as you know well in this room, that we change our behavior, that we learn to reuse, reduce, recycle, and that we learn how to be better stewards of this earth. So I admire the way in which you are also putting a lot of emphasis on your own lifestyles, what you eat, what you grow, and um, how you behave. Um, I think we need to have many diverse ways and learn from each other and encourage each other. This is something in which we have to exercise personal leadership and personal commitment. Your being here tonight, your activity, su liderazgo, suprema maestra, are already a fine example of that leadership and of stepping forward. Out of her deep love for our Earth and its inhabitants, Supreme Master Ching Hai has been at the forefront of the planet-saving effort, encouraging and motivating many people to protect land and life as the Hopi do. The following is part of a speech she gave to delegates of many nations who are trying to reach an agreement at the 2010 United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP16, in Cancun, Mexico. Some planets are more, more spiritually uh, developed or more technologically developed, but not all of them as beautiful as this. And even some of them envy our planet. Many things we take for granted, for example, apple trees, apricot fruits, they love because they don't have them there. Please appreciate our home. I just want to tell you that so that you appreciate our home and try to save it. We can save that. We can save all that we wanted to save because we have the power. All of us, all of us have the power to do that.
Well, you have been told already that uh, animal raising is the number one cause of all the illnesses and all the disasters in our world. So if we stop that, we'll be okay. Yes. Then we have a beautiful planet still and peace and no disease and rich and no hunger, no war. Thank you very much and and I love you all. You're my brother and sister and you're doing a great job. I count on you to save the planet. Let's now go over one important remaining prophecy. Long ago, two sacred tablets were given to the two grandsons of the Spider Woman, a powerful helper of the great spirit Masau. The older brother of the Shining Light was to go immediately to the east. Upon reaching his destination, he was to return to help his younger brother, the Hopi people, bring about peace, brotherhood, and everlasting life. The elder brother is affectionately called by different names, the Great White Brother, the True White Brother, and Pahana, a name derived from the Hopi word Pahu, which means ocean. Here, we are also reminded of the prophecy of Nostradamus about the ocean religion that will win. The prophesied return of Pahana is profoundly significant, not only to the Hopi, but also to all of Central America's ancient civilizations. He is believed to be the same long-awaited savior known as Kukulkan to the Mayans and Quetzalcoatl to the Toltecs and Aztecs. The Hopi foretold clues about Pahana's return. When our series continues, we'll explore all these clues and more, including connections we found between Pahana and Supreme Master Ching Hai, whose names both remarkably have the word ocean. It is known that our true white brother, when he comes, will be all-powerful and will wear a red cap or red cloak. He will be large in population, belong to no religion but his very own. Elders say that the elder brother might change the color of his skin, but his hair will remain black. With him there will be two great ones, both very wise and powerful. He has his own tablet representing his own title and power within the Creator's plan. 